So to start with, this is the Grow My SME webinar program. So if you look at the bottom there, there's the website where it's advertised. And if you look at the Twitter feed, there's some terrific stuff on Humber Growth. So and on LinkedIn, you've got the Humber Business Growth Hub. So there's some terrific stuff on that uh, on those feeds. So I'd encourage you to hook up and hook into uh, those uh, those social media outlets. A lot of terrific stuff being uh, delivered into the Humber Business Growth Hub, and this is delivered by Winning Moves in association with the Northern Powerhouse. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you about advanced skills for the professional webcam meeting. Yes, I am. So what we've got is the technology and you should see something like this. So uh, the first instance, if you want to put some chat in there, feel free to. So there you go. There's some chat you can put in there and how that works. If you just click on that, you can send it out to everyone or you can send it out to me. So if you're really enjoying this, you can send it out to everyone. And if you want me to speed up or slow down, just put directly to me. All right. We've just gone through a little bit about mute. Cool. And uh, you can put some reactions in there. I don't think there's one currently for, uh, for pandemic, but there's one, there's a thumbs up and a handout. So, right. Two Q and A opportunities. So it's going to be about uh, two lots of 30 minutes uh, that, we, that we're going through. So uh, I'm going to try and pick out Q&A as best as I can. And I would encourage you, encourage you, encourage you to put your questions into the chat box. Nothing I love better than a good question. Right. So where does this all come from? I do believe that some of you on this call have, have uh, sat in on stuff that I've done before. So I do a little brief introduction and then we'll get straight into it because I've got some brand new material to share with you, brand new. So you're probably trying to wonder where my accent comes from. I'm obviously based in Hull, which is where I'm sat. So if I have a look at this, there you are. England has 432 people per square mile. If I go back to my homeland, Durban, South Africa. Yeah, we have 48 people per square mile. And then Australia, where I've worked. Yeah. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because this material comes from the Southern Hemisphere. The Southern Hemisphere jumped into online processes very, very early very early if you can refer back revert back when skype first became a thing then you'll find anyone you know from the southern hemisphere because our populations are dispersed so much we moved on to this technology very early so if you're looking for best practice there is an outstanding chance that those of us that have got 15 16 17 years experience on the use of the webcam, this is where this material comes from. And it's not really that new information because uh, this has been going on over the last 10 years. I'm sure you could remember all of that in variable carbon costs. And the technology has improved, even though we had a little full start today. You know, generally, the, the, the technology, it, it, works, it works well. I think in any technology, you might have a little bit of a, a bit of a blip. And I think we've got our first bits of uh, chat, which I appreciate there. So let's have a look at that. Oh, fantastic. So, um, yeah, let's just get a bit more like it. So you can see there that you've, the, the technology's improved. But what's happened over time is we've seen this effect, that the webcam has become a part and parcel of, of how we go about uh, doing things. Okay, we're just gonna, all right, that's fantastic. Great, there's a lot of chat happening. That's cool, loving the chat, thank you. So, um, and we've kind of moved and moved and, and the most recent thing, it, it's gone like this, where the webcam, for those of us in, in business, is having a 
considerable impact on on our communication and i'll come back to that i'll come back to that what's happening so as i share with you what's going on if you try and think that we we're we're in this thing called the new normal and we've got the pre-new normal now the best way of explaining it i think is like this um I'm a I'm a big fan of of some British comedians comedians called Morecambe and Wise, and I, and I suspect other people on the call have heard of Morecambe and Wise. And Morecambe and Wise actually started off on the radio. Yes, they actually started off on the radio, and when they first moved to television, they weren't actually a success. Now, anyone that's exposed to the humor of Morecambe and Wise, you'll be surprised they weren't a success. And the reason they weren't a success is initially they were converting radio humor onto the television. They were moving radio humor onto the television. So the point in sharing that with you is that we are looking at these different mediums because these different mediums require a different approach. And as soon as Morecambe and Weiss had the different approach for the television, then their success began. So what you've got here is kind of an oscillation. You've got this new environment where mostly we're interacting with each other uh, via webcam, especially those in business development and business communication. But what's actually happening, we're using face-to-face -face, uh, processes, procedures, arguments, methodology, in the hope that just by hopping on a camera, it will just work the same way. Now it actually doesn't, it doesn't work the same way at all. I really wish that it did because not only does it work for the, for you, it won't really work very well for your clients either. In fact, there's plenty of anecdotal evidence now. And if you look through your favorite browser, there's things like zoom fatigue and there's lots of, bits of material on the, uh, on the, on the internet about what's happening. And, and what is happening essentially is this. Um, yeah, let's have a little reflection on that. Um, I would imagine that everyone on this call at some point has had some training, some coaching, some mentoring, something, something, around the concept of how to run a face-to-face -face meeting. I'm as sure as I can be without knowing you that that's the case. I mean, could you put in the chat box, am I right in thinking that everyone on this call has got what I call some game, some kind of idea, maybe you've watched something online, maybe uh, you, were, you, you were mentored when you, you first started uh, doing your business development, but I'm quite sure that everyone on this call uh, has had some training in some shape or an understanding that you do need to be skilled at a face-to-face -face meeting. I mean, is that right? Could you just drop something in the chat box for me? That'd be great. So if we think that uh, uh, the, 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 co the concept of a face-to-face of a -face, uh, meeting, uh, we can all get our heads around, okay, well, that's, that's one set of skills. I'm sure everyone on this call can get their heads around, well, that's, that's one set of skills, a face-to-face -face meeting. It's a skill set. The way you approach people, the small talk at the reception desk, the way you go into the boardroom, the way you make eye contact, uh, the rhythm of the meeting, you're looking for different cues, you're trying to make eye contact with people in the meeting, you're trying to understand who's picking up on what you're saying, you're probably breaking it up for Q&A to work out who's got questions, who's got objections, who's engaged, who's not. All the things that you, you would uh, recognize as face-to-face -face business meeting skills. And it's a skill. It absolutely is a skill. Um, you wouldn't take someone off the shop floor and put them straight into a face-to-face -face business meeting. Um, so we can get our heads around that, which is pretty cool. The next thing is we can get our heads around written business communication because those of you that are writing uh, business documents or business email or any kind of business communication that's in text form, so it could be WhatsApp, it could even be on LinkedIn. It could be uh, text, which we covered on a previous uh, session. 
I think most of us understand, yeah, there, there's, there's a style to that. That's, that's not for an amateur. Uh, there are people that uh, earn their living by writing copy. The style of it, the method of it, uh, the way people construct sentences, the way people use punctuation, the way people use language, uh, the length of things, uh, the, the, the profundity of things, the layout of things. Um, I'm sure that if your job revolved around communicating to people via the written word, you would understand that you need some game to do that. You, you can't, you just can't just switch from not writing and suddenly become someone that's writing business communication to external people just like that. And I think again, people can get their heads around that. I know when I first joined uh, Barclays bank many years ago in South Africa, that the induction itself to join the bank was how to work with a client face to face, how to write letters back in those days. It was hard copy. Nobody was going to let you near a client without those two skills. And then the third skill, I think we're all aware of uh, the spoken word. That's right. The spoken word, which is usually the telephone, the telephone. And again, uh, it's a skill, how you answer the phone, how you make a phone call, how you structure the call, how you, uh, listen on a call, how you make notes on a call, how you respond to their content, how you communicate your content, uh, whether you should listen, whether you should lead, whether you should follow. Uh, for those of you that are business development on this call, it's an art form, the use of the telephone, that's for sure. Now, when I first left further education to join the bank, I had to go through an induction that lasted five days. And it was five days on this is what we do face to face. This is what we do when we write to clients. This is what we do on the telephone. And those three environments were covered. However, however, uh, as time moves on, I started going on other programs and, and, and partnering with other people. And you kind of build your own method of those three environments. So just reflect on that. I'm sure that you've got some kind of method, some kind of process that you already use. Now, what's happening right now is that the vast majority of people are taking, are taking the content from one, two, and three and just funneling it into a webcam. Whereas the virtual meeting is a separate discipline. Just as face-to-face -face written and spoken are cousins, but they are different disciplines the virtual meeting is a different discipline to the other three and that's one of the problems that we have is that people are taking those skills that weren't designed for the webcam and trying to use those skills within the context of the webcam and it's not happening it's not happening and that's what we're going to investigate today and ascertain the different things that we can we can do so let's have a a little peruse at this. The first thing, you, the reason you should improve your webcam communication, and it's something I touch on, on on multiple webinars, it's that, yeah, you've got this effect where uh, you are a lot less memorable through a webcam. You are a lot less memorable in a web, through a webcam. You just are. We, we all are. Um, all those special powers that you have in a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, those of you on the call that are involved in business development, you'll have, you know, your approach, your, you know, you'll have a bit of charisma, your charm, your uh, way you greet someone, uh, your personality, how it pervades into a room, um, how you conduct yourself in a room. You lose all of that through a webcam. And, and that process is part of the method why people remember you and by default, remember the content you deliver. Now this retention of new information, it's proven to be approximately 20% over 30 days. It's a guy called Professor Herman Ebbinghauser. I'd recommend you have a look at his memory theory. Now this memory theory is deterioration. Now I can't prove this, but there's a body of work out there that at the moment, retention of information 
in online meetings is less than it is face to face. It is less. So you could argue and consider that whatever Professor Ebbinghaus was measuring, it wasn't information being imparted through a webcam. No, it wasn't. So the likelihood is whatever you're communicating is deteriorating even more quickly. So that is another thing to consider. And you're probably not as engaging as, as, you, as you think. I mean, not, none, none of us are. Uh, I mean, I'll give you a little, little anecdote. Uh, everybody thinks that they're memorable. Everybody thinks that they're memorable and their content is memorable and what they're delivering is memorable. I, um, I caught, I think it was about two weeks ago, I was saddened. I was actually saddened to uh, read that Sean Connery had passed away, or I should say Sir Sean. So Sean, so Sean had passed away. Um, I was sad. I was sad to, to, to uh, be aware of that. And I just read this article that, that was uh, published uh, back home about Sean Connery. And um, this is a story that happened shortly after he won the Oscar, shortly after he won the Oscar for The Untouchables. It was in that movie with Kevin Costner, for those of you that remember that movie. And Sean Connery, returned to Edinburgh. He'd returned to Edinburgh shortly after winning the Oscar. He returns back to his home city shortly after receiving the Oscar. He goes back to his home city and he gets into a cab, a taxi cab at the train station in Edinburgh. And as the taxi cab driver is driving to his destination, Sean Connery is naming the streets that the cab driver is driving along. So Sean Connery is naming the streets. So the cab driver says, well, uh, how come you know the area so well? So Sean Connery says, well, I used to deliver milk for the cooperative society when I was a younger man. And this was the area that I used to deliver milk. So the cab driver said to him, so you used to deliver milk? He said, that's right. So the cab driver said, and what is it you do now? But Sean Connery wasn't able to answer that. Now, the point is, if Sean Connery, uh, with all the success he's had as James Bond and everything, in his hometown uh, isn't as memorable as you'd think, then I think we should be thinking, well, one of the key parts of our webcam methodology is being memorable and being memorable for the right thing. So, it's, so a big thing about webcam communication is content memorability content memorability content memorability because what we're fighting with is this little fella here and it oscillates backwards and forwards now what you've got is is two uh you've got two axes there one axis is interest and the other axis is how relevant it is so if you want to gain someone's interest you're going to have to be improve how relevant you are during the call. So quite clearly the cab driver in Edinburgh wasn't a fan of, of James Bond and clearly didn't watch gangster movies. So perhaps to him, uh, Sir Sean Connery was just another local jumping into his cab for all I know. So you need to think about with your processes that we're going to cover with your input, what can you do to be more relevant? Because what's happening at the moment is all of us are time poor, time poor, bandwidth poor, time poor, bandwidth poor, attention span poor. Even, even, on, this, even on this webcam, this webcam scheduled for, for, for 90 minutes, some of you may have to drop off the call because it's recorded and you've got other things to do. Uh, some of you are running a business and you have to immediately be drawn to keeping your business running and listen to what I have to say. And that's just how it is. People doing business development on the call, there was some data last week that came from the University of California, Los Angeles. How about that? UCLA. That's saying on average, on average, people are having six, six Zoom meetings a day. Now, I don't know exactly where they got the, the material from. So in the first instance, it's from California. So it's not from Hull. The second thing, Meetings about what? So I don't have that. But they, had, they did a, uh, a questionnaire 
to the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, which is pretty big, the LA Chamber of Commerce. It's pretty, it's pretty big. And uh, thousands and thousands of people were responding to this questionnaire. In fact, I can tell you how many people responded. Let's have a look. 11,312. 11,312 responded to this. So the average was six meetings a day. Now, I, I'm personally having that, that kind of figure. And the challenge with hopping from call to call to call, the content merges into one conversation. So you really need to be very, very uh, focused on making very specific notes about everything that's going on. And of course, those of you that do make notes, what happens is this. You lean into the webcam and all that the other person can see is your scalp, which you're losing eye contact. So we'll look at this, but this is the challenge that we, why we need to look at our webcam communication. Lots of bandwidth is being soaked up by meetings. Attention spans are being compressed. People are going into these meetings, sharing far too much content for a business meeting. People are going into the meetings, sharing communication processes that are rooted in face-to-face, -face, the telephone, and, and the written word. And it all means that this webcam communication doesn't work as well as it should. So let's have a look at this. In brief, my reflection on how long is all this going to last, well, we know currently, I think there's a, an announcement today that the uh, government and the leadership team of the United Kingdom are doing all they can to get the number of cases down because of the treatment capacity. Um, I'm not a scientist, but everything that, I, that I'm seeing from the procurement end, so I'm talking from procurement. So if you're like me, I can't wait for there to be a, uh, a vaccine and I can't wait to start meeting people again. And, and I don't know about you, this, this, is, this is hard yards uh, talking to everyone via a camera. But the procurement part of the economy, the people that spend money, the people that buy your services, the people that want to spend money on your services, the people that would like to hear about your services, they're not in any rush to start seeing people. And this kind of effect, this could, this could be another... This could be another uh, six months, quite easily, six, nine months. And uh, in terms of procurement, there was some uh, information that came via the Chartered Institute of Procurement. And the number of people that had an intention of a face-to-face -face meeting was below 30%. So I'm not saying that that's sacrosanct, these figures, but the figures that are out there are suggesting that people are having lots of meetings online. They're not looking to meet people face to face. And as a consequence of that, we have to look at the webcam meeting. So let's have a look. And these are the three, four things as advertised, as advertised, these are the things. Now developing a new relationship, developing a new relationship through a camera uh, we're going to explore that to start with. Um, a new relationship needn't be in the context of a sale. A new relationship could be an existing client where you've been introduced to someone else. I mean, today um, I had the, the, the pleasure of, of, of meeting Janet online. It's the first time that we've, that we've met. And you've got like two or three minutes to forge some kind of relationship through a camera, which is a lot more difficult than if you're in a room drinking a cup of coffee um, it's not so easy. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at existing relationships. Now, I ran a similar webinar, I think two weeks ago. And in the Q&A, somebody asked me the value of moving face-to-face -face rela relationships to online relationships. My experience and my opinion is that because we don't know how long the COVID is going to last, the COVID-19, we don't know how that's going to last. And because we cannot be sure of the return to normalcy or what normal normalcy looks like, I would suggest that while you have got strong relationships, while you have got strong relationships, you get those relationships into a webcam relationship as quickly as you can. Even if it's a, 
even if it's a catch up, even if it's a catch up. Um, I've been doing it myself. Uh, in my own CRM system, I've got one six, 16 clients, one six, that uh, I am constantly, when I say constantly, probably every three months asking for a catch up via the webcam because I need to try and keep those communication channels very, very clean and clear. And also get the client used to the fact that the webcam is an acceptable medium for a catch up, not a phone call. But we'll come on to that. This one's a sticky one. I haven't actually had to deal with this, but I've been hired by five different companies now. How do you manage how do you manage complaint through a webcam? Yeah. And no, I'm not gonna tell you who's hired me <laughs> to do that. But yeah, it's not a cool one, is it? I mean if you're business to business, nobody wants to manage dissatisfaction through this. What you want to do is meet up with them and understand their point of view and show them some empathy and buy into their point of view and hear them out. Make sure that your relationship is robust and show them that you care by taking the problem away. On a webcam, that's not so easy. It's not so easy. So we're going we're gonna to look at that. We're going to look at that. The fourth one, scope. Now, scope can be an existing client, or it can be a new client, or it can be an existing project. And there's been a lot of challenges around uh, scope because generally uh, communication channels are less effective when you're at a distance. And scope meetings have been shown to be quite difficult to manage on a, on a webcam call. So we're, we're gonna have a look at that and see what we can make of it. So, now I always show these, although they're sales models, think of them as communication models, okay? Think of them as communication models. That's the way I want you to think of them. The drawback is that not one of those selling systems was designed with the webcam in mind. Not one of them was designed for the webcam in mind. So anyone on the call that's, that's had the privilege of going through any of these systems, and, and there's some good ones there. I, I, I got to say that the Challenger sale, that's been around a, a while. Um, very, very good method. Sandler selling system. These are all either books, selling systems, or things that you can actually um, look at through your browser and find information about. So these are, are actually things. These are things. And if we look at these things, there's probably only three of them, uh, in my professional opinion, that would work very well through a, a webcam. So anyone on the call that's involved in business development, I mean, you'll get these slides as a PDF. I would be looking, I'd be putting into my browser, solution selling, consultative selling, and value selling frameworks and possibly use that as a foundation for your communication tactics through the strategy of using a, a webcam. Okay. Um, wh whichever part of your career you are, a webcam meeting, if it's sales, it looks something like this. Everyone introduces themselves. Then people talk about their credentials. Then you listen to what the client wants. Then you share, well, this is how we do it then uh, this is why you should use us. You know, the size of our team, the quality of our team, the clients we've got, our reputation, all that good stuff. Then you've got all the sticky stuff. This is the cost of hiring us. This is the, the risk within the scope. Uh, these are the kind of fees that we charge. Yeah, then you, you normally go back through it and then you start saying, well, what are the next steps or when can we start? So it's a pretty... Whichever sales method you're using, that's pretty much uh, the toolkit that people have. Uh, and most people are using that method and just jumping onto a webcam to use it, which I understand. Now, this is something different. Uh-oh, yeah. So look at those blocks, okay? That's a four block sales model, communication model, okay? And, uh, I think we all understand what closing means. Menus are what you bring to the table where you can use them to try and get the deal. So it could be you can offer concessions 
A concession is a discount, 10% discount. A reliever could be, um, if you can agree today, I can get that delivered on Monday. That's a reliever. It's not a concession. A concession is when you're giving something away. A reliever is when you're putting something into a relationship to relieve any stress. So I'm going to suggest to you that these are two areas that on the webcam, you need to be very well rehearsed on concessions and relievers. And I'll show you some more. Initiative driven tactics. This is pretty much the concept of doing some research on the client beforehand and using information about the client that you can play into the conversation. So I could say, oh, it's, you know, it's terrific to be speaking to you today, Janet. I see that your company's just won yet another contract. I'm so pleased for winning moves. You guys are doing so well. And I can also see that uh, you've added two more uh, consultants to your team. Fantastic. So what I'm doing, I'm introducing information so that when I'm speaking with, with, with Janet, we've got this commonality. Now, are you ready? Here we go. Yeah, this is the one. Now you're gonna get this, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get this uh, with the, the, the slides. When you're communicating through the webcam, it's far more complex. Now we're not gonna go through every one of those blocks in this uh, uh, seminar. It would be inappropriate. But if I just talk through generally what this means, and then when you're preparing for a, uh, an online meeting, you have got like a, what I call a crib sheet, a crib sheet, and you can use that crib sheet to get yourself organized, to get yourself ready, to get ready. So let's have a look. I'm just going to drink some more water. Look at that. So let's have a look at this then. So we start at the bottom. Now currency, currency, you understand currency. So like, for example, I'm in Hull. I'm in Kingston upon Hull, bully for me. Now I wouldn't try and spend South African Rand in Hull. Why wouldn't I do that? Because it's the wrong currency. If you want to buy anything in Hull, you're going to have to use pounds and pennies, you're gonna to have to use pounds. So we understand the concept of, of currency. So if you look along the bottom of this, you've got all the different currencies you need to get right through a webcam. These are all the different currencies you need to get right. So don't think you can spend pounds when someone is expecting dollars. Don't think that you can spend schlotty when someone's expecting um, francs, euros. It, 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 does, it doesn't work. So if you look along the bottom, we'll start with have, is it likely that the personnel is a good match? So for example, if they want to talk about finance, have you got someone on the, on the call that can speak finance? Because that's the right currency. A finance guy doesn't want to hear that much about how fantastic your customer service offer is because it's not what a finance guy is paid to do. Moving along, the right power currency. Well, it's pretty much around hierarchy. So a managing director of a company might expect that the person that he's speaking to has got the power to make a decision because he has. So that's the right power currency. The right proposition currency. The right proposition, the right proposition is, are you sure that what you're talking about is a really good match for what they're prepared to listen to. Are you sure that's the case? Because if you're relying on your sales skills to get that over the line, sales skills function completely different through a webcam. The right profit currency, what does that mean? Well, everybody's looking to make profit. It's more like, uh, are they able to, uh, are they looking for a transactional relationship or are they looking for a quality relationship? I mean, it's basically three things people can pick. They can either pick the price, the quality, or the speed that something's done in. That's it. You, you can have two out of those threes. So you can have something that's uh, of a high quality and done quickly, but you can't choose the price. You can choose the price and have something done quickly, but you can't choose the quality. You see where I'm coming from. So you need to think about, are we all on the same page regarding profit? Are we measuring the same thing? 
is that what we're measuring? Is it what we're measuring? I mean, I'll give you an example of that. Not that it, it's just an example for this call. Uh, I'm sure you'll be fit, thrilled to know that I was educated at the London School of Economics and I've got a postgraduate banking degree. I'm sure you're thrilled to hear that. Now, I consult for a number of banks and that is the right currency on every one of those along the bottom is the right currency. If I'm not talking in the banking sector, I'm talking about dollars when they're prepared to spend pounds. The right gold currency, that's all about the goals of the call. So you might be on the call expecting them to agree on something. They might be on the call to understand, to get more information. You might be on the call to share more information. They might be on the call to see if you can meet their specification. Try and make sure, have, are we aligned? So that's the bottom line. The next level up, it's this. This is the base that you, that you do business from through a webcam. Constraint. You've got to be very clear on a webcam call what your constraints are. Constraints, constraints could be um, time. Constraint could be budget. Constraint could be specification. Uh, constraint could be... Um, some operational details of the way they, they do business, but you, you need to be familiar with their constraints, their constraints. You don't want to uncover constraints through a, a webcam. You want to know those constraints. Relationships, that, all that means is, is the person that you're dealing with the person that, that's the right person? Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but you need to start thinking through a webcam, it's a lot more difficult to work things out through a webcam, so you need to work that out in advance. Personnel, what kind of personnel do you need on the call? That's pretty straightforward. And how much preparation? Knowledge, how much preparation? Assessment means this. Okay, in your assessment, how much risk are they prepared to take? Now, you might say no one's prepared to take risk. Well, there's some truth in that, but um, I'll give you an example. Uh, two weeks ago, um, I, it's gone through, I had the opportunity uh, to, to, to work for somebody and it was the first time that they'd used me. It was the first time. So you could argue, well, there's a risk in that. There's also a risk on my, on my side. It's the first time I've worked for them. Am I going to get paid on time? Cuts both ways. So start doing a risk assessment and then think about what kind of risk assessment are they going to do on you? What's their risk framework all of this has got to happen through a webcam so you need to prepare for it differently than you're in a room because when you're in a room you can read the room you can look for cues physical cues of how your information is going down whereas here you've got to approach it much more scientifically time you've got you've got to start thinking in advance well how much time are they going to invest on this offset offset means the trade the trade is time quality price time quality price how how do they assess things okay positioning that's a big one through a webcam um you see through a webcam we all much pretty much look look the same pretty much look and sound the same notwithstanding accents but through a webcam everybody loses a lot of their of their power um what do i mean by that talking about banks um, banks lose a lot of their power through call centers and webcams historically if you were going for a business transaction and you go into a bank the bank has got a lot of power when you go into the bank there's the building the presentation of the bank the presentation of the team you've got all their marketing messages you've got an appointment with the bank manager you if that's possible and you go in and there's usually the, the the setting of the banks there there may be some certificates that the bank manager has has been awarded all of that positions the bank manager as credible but it but it's it's all lost through a webcam the whole thing's lost through a webcam Credibility positioning is very, very important. So you need to think through a webcam. You're going to have to do that differently. Association positioning, that, that's the power of association. It works well through a webcam 
and it's one of the best uh, tool, tools that you can use. Um, let's give you an example of this. Not on this call, not on this call, because I'm, I'm lucky enough to be working with the Winning Moves team. But I do a lot of work for the Barclays Eagle Lab uh, tech incubators, okay, technology. So when I do anything for them, I've got a blue backdrop with the Barclays logos, all the Barclays stuff that goes with it. Now, that's the power of association because there's only four of us that cover the 26 Barclays incubators. So you've got the immediate association with Barclays. You could say, well, it's credibility positioning, but it's, it's more than that. You've got the association of working with the largest bank in the UK, delivering business development coaching. Decoy positioning, that's the opposite. And it's a lot easier to do that through a webcam. So be aware, beware. Through a webcam, things that don't look that credible might look that credible. I'll give you an, an, an example of, of this, an example of this. It's perhaps not the best example, but it, it's the difference between uh, meeting somebody and, and seeing somebody. So, um, this has happened in the last four weeks. So this is, this is hot off the press. What happened? Uh, we had a meeting. I say there were six of us on the call and, um, to cut a story short, it, the call was about implementing some technology. So the call was at quite a, a high level, all done through, uh, through a webcam. And, I was very, very impressed with the business I was talking to. What happened? One of our side, let's call it our side, had to drive through Manchester for something without breaking any of the COVID rules. Broke through, so drove through, broke through, drove through and went past the address of the company and took a photo, which she sent me. Now, if we'd have had the meeting in those premises, I would be a lot, lot less confident about their ability to work with us. And it kind of, they weren't misleading us in any shape nor form. They were not doing that. They weren't doing that. But because it's the land of green screens and backdrops and, you know, <laughs> you, you can't really tell a great deal. I would have been more than happy to have met them at C4DI in our offices in Hull, but we couldn't. And uh, so it was an online. So you also need to think about, is there a decoy position taking place in this meeting? Tactics, um, we're gonna talk about those. I've touched on concession and, and reliever, and we've got a closing process. So I would, if I was you, use that model that if you've got a key meeting, you won't use every single one of those blocks. No way, you won't use all of those blocks, but it's absolutely worth just going through it and thinking, okay, does any of this impact on what we're about to do? So let's have a look at this. Now this is why it's so important and we'll break it into the different parts of where this all happens. To start with, everybody's got this journey that they start off as a prospect, they then turn into a first meeting, they then turn into a new client, we then have the contract, and it sits on a, on a platform, which is the, 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 the time frame this happens. Now, each one of these requires a different approach. And I'll show you why. Currently, every piece of information that, that I, I collect myself on my own software company, um, the number of prospects has gone down by nearly a third because people are putting decisions off until next year, kicking it down the road like a can, which is fair enough. It's fair enough. So we've got less people that are prospects. Of those prospects, the number of meetings people are agreeing to have with us has gone down by a fifth. We're getting a lot of meetings rearranged and a, a meeting that's organized through a camera. It's not as sticky as a meeting that's agreed face to face. 
our conversion rate has gone down by 15%. Partly, I think, because we're not so skillful at communicating this sophisticated software. We're already working on a way of debundling the software. So instead of buying the whole thing, you're buying something much smaller. That's an easy decision. But we're waiting for the developers to sort that one out. And what's happening to us is people are looking for, for, for discounts. So that, that's, that's what's happening to us. And then it's taking us 20% as long to do all of that. Now, the impact, yeah, that's the actual output of the, on, on revenue. Um, so I always share this model with everyone, every time. Get a grip on what's going on with your own business development. I'm sure, I don't know if there's any bookkeepers on the call, but I'm sure you can get an accountant to run up a, an Excel spreadsheet or get someone or even do it yourself. You can look it up, how to work out what's going on. Because all of this is taking place through the, through the webcam. So I, I'm always thinking when I'm on a call, how can I shorten, how can I shorten the time frame? How can I create some urgency? Because that's one of the downsides of doing things through a webcam. It's not so urgent because rather than I say, all right, uh, Janet, I'd like to book a meeting with you in Birmingham. I'm going to drive over to Birmingham. We're saying, well, let's just hop on to a Zoom meeting. It doesn't have the gravity hopping on a meeting. So we're trying to compress it. And how we're compressing it is this. I'm saying, well, every time we've got a meeting, I'm saying, well, I'm going to need my two colleagues on the call. And that'll be difficult to set up. So let's set up the next meeting now. Let's set up the next meeting now. So that's the first takeout. Set up your next meeting at the end of your existing meeting. Don't set up meetings. Now I use a product called Calendly, which I can recommend. But I found that when I was using Calendly, it was stretching the cycle longer and longer. And they're not the only one. You've, you're probably using a calendar system. That's cool. But the key to this is when you're on a call, ask, set up your next meeting there and then. Set it up there and then. Don't let it kind of drift there and then. Set it up there and then. When you're converting prospects into first, into, into first meetings, what to do, I believe, is to, through the webcam, set up a deadline. And this is, a, this is a process that seems to be working very well through the webcam, and especially with new relationships. You have to have what I would call like a, the rules of engagement, because right now in this virtual world, it's not quite clear what the rules of engagement are. So you need to be putting in deadlines. When you meet someone, I'll call you back on Monday, and on Monday we'll be looking to speak on Wednesday. When we speak on Wednesday, we then book the next meeting, which is the next Wednesday. Try and get it in your mind to, do, to, to go back to that rather than using these virtual calendars. These virtual calendars, calendars are very convenient, but they're not convenient in terms of developing relationships. So when you're developing a, relation, a new relationship, we've got all these things that have altered. So when I developed a new relationship, mostly it'd be on site. So again, I don't know what everyone's doing on this call, but I used to go on site and you, you're on site and you, you start chatting. Can we do that now? No, just like today, suddenly all the, uh, it just showed there were people in the room. We clicked everyone, we let them in and hey, we're away. Can we have a chat as we enter the building with the receptionist? No. Nope. Some of big companies, you, you're, you're met at reception and then you walk to the boardroom. We can't do that. We can't even stand around making a coffee, making small talk. You know, the kind of thing with small talk. How's it going? What's been happening with you? Looks like you guys are doing well. That, that kind of thing. You, you can't do that. And finally, we, we don't have that. Now, those five things came from a survey that I did three months ago. And in total, there was nearly uh, 600 people did the survey, 587. <coughs> and these were the things that people were missing most of all in terms of creating relationships in business. So what can we do? 
get the other side talking. So I threw a webcam and we haven't done it today because this is a seminar and it's being recorded. Um, but let's say we all met for the first time. It would be quite reasonable to do a round robin. How are you managing? How's everyone managing? Can you put in the chat box how you're managing? It would be reasonable to do that. Or if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be saying to Janet, so how are you managing? How's it going? What's happening for you? There's another question there. How are your clients managing? How are your clients managing? How are the clients managing? How are the clients of your clients managing? By the way, this list of questions, we built this list of questions back in April, and it came from a tech conference called Wolves Summit. Um, the number of people that built this list wasn't so big. I think there was only about 70 respondents, but these were the kind of things that people were uh, coming out with. So when you get the, the slides and the notes, I think that you need on your webcam, let's call it your game, your webcam style, make sure you're asking lots of questions now. Be the one that asks questions. Guys, great to see you. So tell me, how are you managing? All right. And how are your clients managing? Okay. And generally, what, what's happening in your sector? I see a lot of things on the internet. Get people to talk. Get people to talk. Getting people to talk is more critical now than at any other time in business development. Now, this is why you need to do it. Now, this arithmetic, I go through it every single person that comes into contact with me. Get a grip on these formulas. These are sales formulas, they're business development formulas, but these formulas will keep you in business. So let's just go through it. So before the pandemic, we were turning over around about a million. And that's the formula. We had a lapse rate. So the lapse rate means that 50% of our customers don't renew. It's just a feature of the sector that we're in. We couldn't get it to 100% if we had to and wouldn't want to. The average contract was two years. And what it meant was for every million of revenue that we banked, 750k of it would be recur recur recurring revenue the following year so that was the formula for us now i know there's different people on the call with different business models but you can work it out how this affects you so we would expect that 25 percent of the revenue that we've won would deteriorate within two years but what's happening now that's right that's how the figures looked. Those were the figues that are presented at the, at the mid year. Yeah, you can imagine what a laugh that boardroom meeting was. It wasn't. Uh, people were committing on average to a shorter period. We don't actually have a one and a half year contract. It was one or two um, and it was coming out at one and a half. Can you see the impact that it's had? I mean, that's serious. This is why you need to develop existing relationships because it's existing relationships that will ring fence that money. It's relationships, people by people. So let's have a quick look through it. Now you can, you can, you can do this easily, more easily enough. The first thing to do uh, is make a lot more use of LinkedIn. Now I don't use LinkedIn as a prospecting uh, tool. Um, I know some people do. I, I don't. I have other ways of, of, of developing business. But I do certainly think that it's a terrific tool for looking for cues that you can use through a, a webcam. And, I, and I'll show you exactly an example. On Thursday, um, I was involved in a business development meeting um, with an insurance company. Um, to be frank, I don't know how well it's gone. I, 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 won't, I won't know. And I kind of don't guess. But what happened before the meeting, I looked at the LinkedIn profile of three of the people on the call. Now, anybody can do that. You don't have to be Jason Bourne, uh, you know, the CIA to do that. 
And I think it's business etiquette because I reached out to all three of them prior to the meeting. And I could see that one of them had worked for the same bank that I had. I could see another of them had had a similar role to a role that I've had in my CV. And another one was pretty much based in London, which is where uh, most of my banking career was. So I found three shared experiences. Now, as we come into the, 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 the webcam call, um, that's what I'm searching for. When I'm communicating, I'm looking to use those, um, relate those, those reference points as methods for create, keeping that bridge going. Now, I wasn't doing that when I was meeting them face to face because it wasn't so important because I was meeting them face to face. So I was saying stuff like this. You could try this. Do you know what, Jerry? I never realized, I never realized you used to work for Coots Bank. I never realized that. I worked for Coots Bank for seven years. I never knew you worked for Coots Bank. And he starts talking about his experience. And we then started doing things like, uh, you know, like remember an old footballer. Do you remember so-and-so? Do you remember so-and-so? You can use these, these items that are in LinkedIn profiles to try and create those little conversations that lubricate relationships. And you're going to have to work a lot harder through the webcam. You really are. Always look at your language. So there's three ways of, of defining things. Now I'll put problem. It could be need. It could be requirement. It could, it, it, you know what we're talking about here. We, we're trying to see things through the buyer's own words. So again, when I'm on an existing relationship, I do a, a heads up around their website. And most websites have got a mission statement. There's going to be stuff that they're committed to, or you'll pick up language. You might even look at the CEO's bio. There'll be things that you can find. There's always things that you can find on, on a website that help you start looking at this. And again, I'd also be looking at, uh, is there anything they've posted online on the website? Is there a blog? Is there a news channel? Is there anything that I can use to start using the buyer's own language? So for example, um, I'm mainly, um, the, in terms of software uh, sales, one's banking and insurance and one's law, law tech and fintech. Those are the two things. So the language for those two um, environments is completely different. Although the product's pretty much the same, actually, it's based on an algorithm. So although it's pretty much the same technology, what it will do for the end user in terms of the pandemic, it's very, very difficult, very, very different. It's not difficult, it's just different. So for example, right now, um, the value of it to a bank is this, and I use the bank or the insurance company's own language to explain it. The value to a legal practice looks like that, and I use the language of the middle management of a legal firm to explain it. Now, on a camera, it's vital vital that you give yourself the advantage by using their language, using their language. It's vital you do that. You don't have the, the room, you don't have the floor, you don't have the ability to create that empathetic environment that you need to keep relationships going. So you've got to manufacture relationships that when people come off the call, they think, wow, Bob, Bob certainly knows his banking. Wow, crikey. Bob had a real good grasp of how the practice works. I even had something about two months ago, and I, I am not a practicing lawyer, just, just so you know, but, uh, and I certainly wasn't uh, uh, trying to do a decoy position. I absolutely wasn't, but because I was able to define the problem from the practice's perspective using their language, one of the people on the call thought, that previously I'd been a lawyer, which, which I haven't, I haven't been. I'm not, I'm not, my, that's not my background. I did actually share that I, I am not a lawyer, just to be clear. Um, for those of you that are on the call that are Dutch, it's an old Dutch saying, if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. It sounds better in Dutch. Okay, let's have a look. Where are we? I'm watching the, uh, I'm watching the time, Janet, so don't you worry. Okay, oh boy, managing complaints. 
Well, let's have a little look at this. Now, it didn't be a complaint like a complaint in a chat bot. It could be when you know that a relationship starting to uh, deteriorate and you're trying to repair it through, through a webcam. You're trying to do that. Well, unfortunately, people sound a lot more aggressive through a webcam. Yeah, it's a strange one there. It's a strange one. There's a whole body of work uh, on it. It's a bit like uh, people um, put things in a, in a letter they wouldn't say to you, that kind of thing. Well, people on a webcam call, if someone's actually uh, complaining about what you've done or has got dissatisfaction with what you've done, it can unfortunately escalate quite quickly. And then you've got this kind of little time blip where um, you can't quite be sure have they finished what they're saying and have you finished what you're saying. And so you can sometimes have this thing where the vocal rhythm, it just isn't working. So um, the key part of this is premier listening skills. Um, listen, listen, listen. Even if you totally disagree with the feedback that they're sharing with you. Don't challenge the dissatisfaction. Do not do that. Through a webcam, you're better off doing this. Um, what I'd like to do, uh, Janet, is to hear you out, is to hear you out entirely. Um, I'd like to hear you out with no interruptions. And, I, and I'd like you to uh, share all that with me. And if it's all right with you, Janet, what I'll do at the end, I'll any questions that come up, I'll, I'll leave them to the end. Is, is that, is that going to be okay, Janet? Because I really want to hear what you've got to say. It's really important to us. And I think the best way is if you just tell us the whole story from your perspective, what's happened, what's happening, how you see it, and then I'll respond at the end. That is far better because um, you don't have the opportunity to really read how, how Janet feels. So you're going to see her and people are usually pretty neutral when they're looking into a camera. Uh, so what you want is that she's going to share the whole shooting range with you at the end of it. Thank you so much for, for pointing that out. Um, I was unaware of most of that. Um, can I just feed back to you what you've shared with me? Can I do that? I really want you to double check that you feel that I've understood what you're saying. I want you to feel that I've understood what you're saying. The feedback loop on a webcam is far more important than anything else. So at the end of it, it's got to be really be clear. I want to feedback to you what I think that you've said to me because I want to double check. I've, I've, I've understood it correctly. And I want you to confirm at the end of this, if you feel that I've understood what's been happening, that's what I want to understand. Um, through a webcam, you've got to be much more measured and much more precise. Okay, this is, this is something else, scope meetings. Boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, scope meetings. I'm involved in, in, te in technology, so this needn't apply to every, every, every discipline, but it's almost a sector where if in doubt, hold a meeting, that's number one. And number two, let's see how many people we can CC in on an email. So what's happened in this Zoom era is that meetings generally have become more and more unwieldy because people can attend them. People can attend them. Um, yeah. What you want to try and do, if you can, with a scope meeting, is to use expressions like this. So I do it like this. In my experience, uh, we, we, run, we, run, we, run, we try and run meetings with a maximum of four people involved, if that would work for you. Because in my experience, the four people can actually scope out what needs to be done. And then if we need to break it into smaller meetings, we can do that. But my experience is that meetings with more than four people involved struggle to generate results. That, that's been my experience, but I'm quite happy to listen to your experience. So that's um, something I would recommend that you, that you do because if you can, 
we don't want large meetings. Now here's something. Um, we've got a we've got a short Q and A before I share some slides. So anybody got any questions on those slides? I would love to hear questions. I love hit questions. In fact, the more difficult, the better. I mean, can I be fairer than that? Does that sound fair? The more difficult, the better. Let's just put this up here. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Well, um, one of the typical questions that, that I that I have is around how long should meetings last? And I think that you should be looking at meetings that last approximately 45 minutes maximum, but try and get it that they last 30 minutes because there's a body of work that says that after 30 minutes, uh, retention of information deteriorates dramatically. So let's spend the last 10 minutes going through this. Now, I know people are saying that it's gonna be the same for everybody. This, this, this current thing, what's the point of getting good on a webcam when it's the same for everyone? Well, it won't be the same for everyone unless that's the, that's the environment. But even then, if I work twice as hard preparing for meetings, if I work twice as hard to generate feedback, if I am twice as skillful at getting my ideas across via the webcam, and I talk to my customers twice as much, and I'm asking for referrals and introductions, and I'm asking for testimonials and references. So, so right now, um, I've been asking for more references during the COVID era than at any point in my career, because it's almost like only a reference received during COVID is valuable right now. Anyone can talk about what they were able to deliver before the pandemic, but now, yeah. So that's something else I'd consider. And I'm always saying to people, look, everything has a variable value, even Coca-Cola. Even Coca-Cola has all these different price points. And these were all the price points in the Intercontinental Hotel in Warsaw. So in, in one hotel, there were six prices for Coca-Cola. So I want you to start thinking about how do you get your value across and how do you position it? So one to one and then one to two. What are the differences in a web meeting? Well, in the first, in the first instance, with a one to one, you can spend more time on relationship building. On a one to two, you need to really spend some time working out who's who from their side. So what I would do, I would always, if you come onto a meeting and there's more than one person and you was expecting one, I'd always say, well, well, obviously we all need to introduce each other. Can you just share with me your role and your role in this meeting just to make sure that I'm covering everything that needs to be covered? So that's a little phrase, your role and your role in this meeting. If there's two of you and one of them, you have to decide in advance what are your roles in the meeting. And then when you come onto the call, you share with the respondent on the call, th this is what I do in my company and this is my role in this meeting. You do a round robin. Now with this, it's slightly different because you, both parties need to have a lead. You don't want a free for all. So you could say, um, on our side, I will be the lead. Who will be the lead on your side? It's a reasonable question. So that means that really, if you've done that, it's actually a one-to-one -one with subs on either side. And that's far better than having a meeting that looks like that, that's a free-for-all. The plus four, my least favorite one. Yeah. The only way this meeting can work out is if it's very clear who's leading the meeting on either side. It's, and what I would do 
I would ring up the person who's leading the meeting on the other side the day before or a couple of days before and just say, can, can we have a quick heads up? I know that we've got a meeting set up on a, web, on a webcam, in my experience, uh, to get the best out of it. Uh, I need to introduce you to my team in advance. And could I trouble you to introduce me to your team in advance? I will be leading the meeting on our side. And on these subjects, I will be bringing in Brian and Beverly. I can see that you've invited Graham and Diane on your side. Can you just share with me what kind of role they're going to play in the meeting? So it's quite straightforward. That's what I would be doing. So let me just move on from here. Yeah. That there is how you want to be thinking about what you leave in the room. If you remember, I said that so much stuff gets forgotten. Look at this. Start thinking about if they're going to remember mostly the peak or the end, I need to make sure that the peak is a positive. So I would be pulling out, if you're going to have a half an hour meeting, I would, if you're on your own, you can do it on your own. But if you've got colleagues, I'd be thinking about, okay, we need to deliver some really positive hits. We need to deliver some really positive hits in this meeting, some really positive hits. How are we going to do that? Because what you want is as, as they go off your call, they will be forgetting you in the space of time that they've got before their next call. So you're going to have to leave them with some real peak ends and you need to leave them with a high end point. Now I can't tell you what the end point is. The end point is that you can start immediately. The end point could be that you can offer a discount for payment up front. It could be that you've just won an award and you've got an, an award winning team that can engage with them. Um, I, I couldn't tell you what it is, but I do know that you've got to almost talk in sound bites in a webcam meeting. I mean, I'll share this before we, we come to a close. In terms of your communication strategy through a, a webcam, I'm, I'm drawn to um, some of the things that have happened in the last two previous US elections. So if anyone's on this call that's from the US, I'm not from the US, I didn't vote, I don't have a view on it, I'm just illustrating a point. In the previous election, where Mr. Trump was against Mrs. Clinton, the previous election, um, Mr. Trump essentially had what I would call some sound bites. One was Make America Great Again, which he actually got from Ronald Reagan. So Make America Great Again, Build a Wall, and Lock Her Up. He was referring to Mrs. Clinton. So those seem to be the three leading um, things that he was saying, which clearly resonated with the people that voted for him. If you were to say to me, what exactly was Mrs. Clinton communicating? I can't remember that much, really. I can remember that she was a very skillful politician, but if you said to me, and exactly what she done or what she going to do, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you so much, to be fair. I couldn't tell you so much. So I'm not suggesting that you're, um, uh, you need to be talking to people in terms of catchphrases and slogans, but I do think that less is more. And if you are going to uh, revisit how you're communicating things through a webcam, I think that's where you need to get to. Less is more. So finally, let me just move on to here. Okay, Janet, we, we, we've got about 180 seconds uh, to, 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 to go. And I expanded a little bit because of, uh, of the Q&A. But if there's anybody on here that would last, like to ask any questions, that's cool. I would like to tell you there's some terrific, terrific things going on with Grow My SME. Um, absolutely make sure that you uh, register your business on that. And absolutely make sure that you're hooked into the LinkedIn profile of Humber Business Growth Hub and Humber Growth. So if I just go back a little bit, Janet. Yeah, that's fine for you. So I, th I think I've got 120 seconds left, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brilliant. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? <laughs> I can hear you perfectly, Janet. 
Perfectly. Thank you everybody for attending and again apologies for the slight delay to get started. It's wonderful when you work with technology, isn't it? Um, Bob, I think you should have a poll at the bottom, a poll button at the bottom of your screen. If you could just launch that because you've been given the host duty. Uh, all right, let's find... Uh, it should be just on the bar running along the bottom. Um, poll, okay. And if I could ask everybody just to complete the poll and if you have no further questions, well, we'll thank you very much. Actually, uh, Janet, there is a question uh, here. Right. Kevin's asking me a question. We all look the same on the webcam. <laughs> yeah, can I, I'll, is it all right if I... <laughs> yes, carry on. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer. Thanks for that, Kevin, man. It's a, it's a really cool qu question there. All right, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to say, um, Kevin, it isn't so much that we look physically the, 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 the same. It, it's not that. The impression that's left at the close of play or the day after when we're, when we're recalling things is people mainly end up as a kind of a blur uh, because through a webcam, it's kind of difficult to, to be memorable in the context of a business meeting. So I, I certainly understand that, you, that uh, you didn't agree when I said we all look the same on a webcam. But I don't necessarily mean um, physically. It's more like at the end of the day, you, you might have spoken to 20 people through a webcam. And when you're recalling things the following day, it eventually blurs into one because you're losing all that personalized content, Kevin, that makes us all so memorable. So that's, that's what I was uh, referring to. So sorry, I missed that, that, that question or that point, Kevin. I really appreciate the point. So sorry. So back to you, Janet. Shall I launch the poll? Yes, please. That would be great. Thank you. All right. One and poll again, launched. Everybody, if you could just um, if you could just take some time to complete the poll for us, please. Uh, and then, again, thank you very much for your questions and your attention today. Um, yeah, absolutely appreciate that. And uh, thanks for those comments in the chat box as well, Kevin. Very much appreciated. <laughs>